Hello, I'm Guy Walker with ComNet. Today we're actually going to walk through the installation of a wireless Ethernet kit, specifically the NWK1 kit from ComNet. Alright, let's get started installing the NWK1 Ethernet wireless transmission system from ComNet. So, when you order the NWK1, you're going to get two boxes. You're going to get a box for the access point and a box for the, a box for the client. On the box itself, it tells you which it is, an access point or a client. Also, on the unit itself, it'll tell you that this is the access point, and it'll tell you the MAC address for future configuration if you need, if you need that information. Also, in each box is everything you need, mounting hardware, gland, and power injection module for that end of the system. So, if we take a look at the enclosure, we can see the front is uh, pretty standard. It's an IP67 rated enclosure, so very, very good for outdoor uh, mounting. If we turn over the box, we have our four mounting uh, holes here. We have our Ethernet and power RJ45 connection here. Um, with that comes the gland that we'll show you how to use to uh, keep it IP67 rated. And then also you have four LEDs. First LED is your power. When it senses power from the power injection module, you'll get that red light there. You'll get an Ethernet link light that's red here. So what that means is that when it sees a connection to a local Ethernet device, you'll get that link go solid there. It's not the wireless link that it's giving you a status for. That's the next two lights. So the next two lights will give you radio signal strength to the other unit. In this case, we're going to be looking at the client over there. But also, this last LED is also a diagnostic. And that will flash slowly green and then quickly green just during boot up phase and obviously alarming you of any type of issue uh, during boot up. So that's our unit. Also in the box, the mounting hardware. Um, you can see that uh, this is really meant for pole mounting um, and it connects in any way you want to uh, with those four mounting holes in the back and also it is adjustable via angle so you have full uh, management of that. Second is the gland while we're connecting our ethernet cable. We'll show you how to use that. And then you get the power injection module that's taking uh, wide-ranging AC, giving us uh, 12, 24 volts DC to power the actual unit here. The Wallward 110 power supply comes with that. I already have it plugged in under the table here. So, to get started, we'll take our unit. We'll take a look at our local Ethernet switch. So, this is the AP side. So, essentially, think of this as the receiving end of the wireless link. So, if you have a remote camera on a pole in the back of a parking lot, that's going to be the client. It's going to be transmitting back to our AP here, and this is where you're plugging this directly into your network in your local building or local facility. So, out of that local network, we'll take our RJ45, we'll take our power injection module. You'll also hear me call this the PIM. We're going to plug this into the import of the PIM. Then we will take a second patch cord, connect that to the out port of the PIM. And then we will start to put together our gland. And so you're going to kind of work backwards in terms of how you're going to put the whims. So your final cap is going to go on first, then the rubber gasket. And you'll note that this is a pre-terminated cable, which is a great feature. So that means you don't have to put through an unconnectorized cable and then add the connector after you put all this material on. So this will definitely save you some time during installation. Next, we put the main portion of our gland on, screw that down, and then there's an additional gasket that comes on, and we can mount all that together. Then we're just going to plug that into our RJ45, and then work that gland back and screw that down. I'm just going to hand tighten these here, and now we're IP67 rated. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our power cord for our power injection module. Plug that in. You'll see we'll get green link light for the power injection module itself. Then if we take a look at our AP, you can see our diagnostic light is now flashing fast. It was flashing green earlier. Now it's done. Power's on, link light to the switch. So at this point, this is all you need to do at the AP side. This is now going to wait to actually see the link for the other end, which is your client workstation or your client's unit. So, let's go set that part of it up now. Okay, so, now here we are with the client radio, and we're at the camera side. So, now, the AP's all set up, it's waiting for a link, and we have our unit. Same basic installation uh, process here. Uh, it's, it's actually the exact same enclosure. 
Okay, these are just pre-configured. One is a client, one is the AP. So you don't need to do anything really differently. So as we start to install, we take our patch cord from our camera, we take our power injection module, and we connect it to the inbox or the import. We take a second patch cord, connect it to the out port, and then we're going through the same process of adding all that gland uh, pieces onto the cabling itself. Go ahead and plug it in. Then we're going to add the power to the power injection module. So again, power, we get a green link light on the power injection module. And we're going to get the power, we're going to get the link light off to the camera as local activity. And now the diagnostics just finished running. So what actually happens is it takes about a minute to get a full link registered to between the client and the AP. Okay, as we look at our LED status lights, you can see that we now do have connection to, uh, from the client back to the AP, but you can see it's only at half strength. So now the concept of power, point, and play comes into the work. And what we're going to do is actually start to point that client towards the AP until we get full strength over there. You see it came on, came off. We're going to continue to point towards our AP until I get both signals. You can see right there, it'll drop off as I turn it back, but you can see we do have full signal strength. What that means now is we're good to go. We've powered it, we've pointed it, we're now playing. We have full bandwidth, full signal strength across that wireless link, and we don't need to do anything else from here on out. Okay, now we're here back at the AP or the receiving side. We've uh, gone through the setup, the power point and play, pointing the two devices at each other. We've gotten the good status lights down there. Now we can take a look back at our AP, and we have obviously the power light. We have the link light to the local switch here, and we have full signal strength for connection to the remote client. So at this point, we're good to go. We don't need to do any further configuration. We know we have good signal strength. We know the link is up and running, and you're all set. And Hopefully that's all you need to do. However, what you can also do is you can log in and change the settings of the device either directly by plugging directly into it or using a Wi-Fi connection to the unit itself. When you do use Wi-Fi to connect to it, you're not getting access to the network, you're just getting access to the actual device itself to be able to see the settings and edit them. And from there, you have complete access to change everything from frequencies and bandwidth and other uh, security settings. So we'll cover all that material at a later point with a more advanced installation instructions video. So at this point, we're good to go. Thank you for watching our video. If you have any interest in either the industrial or the commercial grade versions of the NetWave product, don't hesitate to contact us. There's great information on the website, or you can always feel free to call us for specific information, detailed product design, or pricing information. Thank you.